So you want to create the stars in the sky and I don't blame you because stars are awesome. Hey guys, welcome back to Test by Kai, I'm Kai and today we are back in Blender once again. Um, taking a look at stars today, everything in our scene must go so we must as well just hit B and box select, delete the default camera, cube and lamp with the delete button. <laughs> One of my numpads to go into front facing view, shift A, or go over here to create, scroll down, and add a camera, drag that back with the minimize button, panning around my uh, scene, zero to go into my camera's view. Now that all of that is done, we can get started doing the stars in the sky. We're going to hit shift A, I'm going to add in a plane um, with the S key, we're going to scale that up to roughly the size of our grid, zero to go back into the camera's view, and GZ. To scroll that bad boy on up and as you can see the, the edge of the plane we're gonna want that to line up a little bit past our camera's view so we can't tell where that ends so it's something about right there looks good but now we can see it so we need to hit GZ scale uh, and, and push that up out of the camera's view even more all right so now that we have our plane in place we have this giant like overhang over our camera what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using particles to create our stars um, so we're going to go to the particles setting tab over here with our plane selected, of course. We're going to hit new, and now if we play our animation, you can see that we have particles falling down from the sky, which is exactly like, what do, you, what do you mean? We're not making snow, we're not making rain. Boom, I know, we're making stars. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pause that at a specific place, and we're going to see how many stars we want in our sky. 1,000 um, is definitely not enough, especially because it's going to be emitting a thousand particles from st the first frame to the last frame. So it's going to be emitting particles this entire time for 250 frames, which is roughly uh, 10 seconds. We don't need 10 seconds. We only need one frame. So we're going to bump up the, em the emission amount to like 10,000. Bump up the emission amount to like 10,000 and our end frame to like 100. So, um, so now more particles will be emitted in a shorter amount of time. So now we have a bunch of freaking particles. That's a lot of particles, uh, which will be our stars. And as you can tell, it's not just a flat like screen. We have an entire 3D space of stars. So if you want to zoom into these bad boys and like kind of get those those Star Wars drive-bys, you know, um, you can definitely get something like that. And I can imagine doing an entire like uh, like a light speed kind of thing. You know, if you have a really, really super long plane, like, you know, you go in like, oh, I'm going to, you know, do some really big thing, have a bunch of particles, you just fly right through there. And I can imagine having this really cool light speed thing. We might do that in the future, but for now, we're just going to worry about our single frame of stars. So, um, with our uh, with our cursor in the center, we're going to hit Shift-A or go over to Create and add in a Icosphere once again. I love using these bad boys because they're so versatile. We're going to go over to the Modifiers tab, which is the wrench over here on the right side, and add a modifier of Subdivision Surface, making this bad boy a bit more smooth, up to just two, since these are going to be pretty small. We're going to go to Tools over on the left-hand side and change the shading to Smooth. So now we are Smooth uh, Icosphere instead of a bumpy one. Um, so as you can tell, it's not exactly 100% smooth, and the reason for that is because we didn't turn the subdivisions up. But we don't need to turn subdivisions up because this is going to be a very, very small, very small circle. These are going to be our stars, actually. Um, so we're going to move this to the second frame. We're going to hit M on our keyboard and change this to the different to a different layer, so that's out of our way. With our stars selected, our our plane, we're going to go back into the camera's view and change to the particle tab. Scroll all the way down here, and um, and go to object right here in the render tab we're gonna go to object and change this little box thing to say icosphere now icosphere is a stars i should have named this stars i usually i usually don't name things but i'll just name it star in the object tab right there so uh, that's it's a good practice to start labeling things i just never do um <laughs> so we'll, we'll select our, our our plane again and these stars are way too big, by the way. These are way too big. Like they're like stars are never that size. But first things first, we're gonna go to. We're, I'm gonna go to cycles render because I like cycles. I like working with cycles. Um, so we're gonna go to the world tab once again. Hit use nodes. Change the color to solid black because that is the you know that space. Um, <laughs> and with our with our, uh, our our stars still selected, we're going to go back. Ooh, actually, we can go to our actual icosphere now on our second layer. And give this a material. We can select the default material that uh, Blender comes with. We're going to use nodes. And we're going to change the surface to uh, emission. And we're going to change the strength to 3. 
somewhere around there. You can give this a very slight bluish color if you'd like to. Something just very, very, very subtle. Something like that. You can barely even see that that's blue. Like, you can't even really see. But um, but something very slight like that, that's definitely that's definitely cool. I do like going with just the white. So I'm going to go with just the white for today. Um, but you can definitely give it a very slight blue color or something like that. But these are way too big. Um, so with, with them selected, we're going to go back to our particle tab and scale the way down and change the size down to 0 0.010. And change the random size all the way up to one so we can get those nice random sizes instead of them all being the same size you see how much of a difference that makes random size is always better in my opinion um but these are still too big if i give this a render you'll be able to tell these are still the stars are not that big nobody has stars that big of course you know some individual stars may be a bit crazy that night compared to other nights but no stars are this big all the time that's insane um so what we're gonna do is because we can't go down further than zero point 0, 010 we can't make them smaller than that so the way we fix this is if we go back to our front first layer and hold down shift and click our second layer where our our actual eichel sphere is at we can actually see both of our layers at the same time which is really neat so we're gonna hit zero on our camera view to go back into that uh view and with our eichel sphere selected i'm going to zoom in here take a look at these stars around the giant eichel sphere take a look at the stars if i hit s and scale this down you'll be able to see that all of our stars scale down as well so if i make this bigger all of our stars get bigger as well so this is how we can get around the fact that we can't make the actual particles smaller we can just change the size of the actual icosphere so we're going to make this pretty small so if i make this about let's, let's see what scale that is is that uh, th 0.383. If I make that 0.383, our stars are still too big. So let's make that even smaller. It's a bit difficult to tell. So we're going to render view port shading for this, actually. It's a bit difficult to tell. Actually, it's difficult to tell in there, too, because the stars come in too late. But if we just go back and forth between the renders, you'll be able to tell. You'll get a good, uh, a good representation. If we turn this all the way up to full HD as well, you'll be able to tell because we're in a weird resolution now. So let's go up all the way up to full HD, see what this looks like. Um, it looks pretty good. I think we're going to leave it like this. Um, but you know what? I want more stars than that. So I'm going to, I'm going to undo both of our layers. So now we can only see our first layer again, and I'm going to add more stars. So it's a bit difficult to see because, you know, they're really small now, but we're going to add in more stars. I know it's, it's crazy. So we're going to go all the way up to 20,000. Um, and we're going to see if that's better. So we're going to play this again. We're going to get a, a little bit of lag, I suppose, just a little bit. And we're going to play that until it's just out of the camera's view difficult to see so we're gonna put this back on halo for the time being um and ooh, you can't see anything at all now oh that's none that's why <laughs> i'm stupid all right okay so we're gonna play this just right but right before it gets down to the bottom right there we don't we want as least particles in our scene as pos uh, possible and we're going back to object and our star is still there all right so we're gonna go to our modifiers tab with our plane selected and we're gonna hit convert this is going to cause a lot of lag, but it's going to be fine because it'll come back eventually. It's going to cause a lot of lag, and it might take a little bit of a second. But what it's doing right now is it, it's taking our particles, and it's making it a mesh. So make sure all of your particle settings are the way you want them to be before you click Convert, or else you're going to have to Control z and go backwards. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to select our plane, and we're going to delete our plane because we, we don't need that plane anymore. I'm, out, I'm also going to hide our camera. So I'm going to hit H on my keyboard with the camera selected, and that's going to hide our camera. The way we're going to fix this lag is, or a little bit less lag, make it easy, easier to manage more, more like it, because we have like billions of stars over here. We can see like this, there's all these stars over on the side. We don't need that. That's difficult to work with. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to double tap A. We're going to double tap A, and we're going to select everything in the scene. Now we're getting a lot of lag. Ah, okay, I see what the problem is. I don't have one of them selected. So, uh, to, to have this work, we have to actually have one of these selected. So, I'm going to hold down Shift and just right-click anywhere and select one of the stars at random. Um, and now we can actually join these right here. That was a problem. We're going to join all of these stars together. All right, so all of our particles are joined together now. And we have a little bit of less lag, I guess. <laughs> we have a little bit less lag. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to unhide our camera by hitting Alt-H. That is that for our stars, pretty much. Um, it's going to take a little bit of a second to render as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And this goes really great with the moon tutorial um, that I'm going to be posting very, very, very shortly. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Um, but until then, bye.